No, he stays out, so he's going to hassle. Ninja's been stuck behind two Alpha Tauris all race long, each one with a minor bit of damage, and he's doing it again here. Kane down the inside will sack them all. He's sent the heroics. Oh, he's in the wall. That's a car out. That oh. was Ninja absolutely turfing Luke into the wall. That is Luke's race over. Safety and we've got car. another full course safety car. My God, that was a bit of an assassination from the Ninja. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Season 4 of the Late Breaking Online Racing League. This is Round 19, and we bring you one of the most iconic and difficult places to go racing. We're here in Monaco. That's right, the uh, the streets, the ones that represent Formula 1 through, through the, uh, the jewel of the crown, as they like to say. Let's see if our boys and lady are able to make it all the way through without ending their own race. Not many races left of the, uh, the season. Bullet Boy and Toxic are the only two people able to win this. And Toxic leads by a good margin. But he's not here today. Bullet Boy is, so he's got a chance to claw back some points. I'm joined by Benjamin Hocking and Harry. My name is Samuel Sage. Boys, how are we feeling about Monaco? Good old Monaco. I've got to love it. And this is, this is as light as you're going to see it, ladies and gents. It will not get any lighter than this because, as usual... The late breaking race in Monaco, we are doing it at midnight, so it will be completely pitch black. We will decide to put a few lights around the circuit to help the drivers, but at least in terms of the overall lightness, it will be completely dark. I so mean, looking forward to that one. Harry's just crashed into the wall trying to get out of the way of someone, which is hilarious. Um, I, I, I all right, um, on my screen, you did. Um, I was thinking that we'd just e give each person a, a torch, a flashlight for any American viewers, and ask them to sellotape it to the front of their car and hope that they can get around. But I suppose floodlights are appropriate. Yeah, just bear in mind, actually, a time at 1.09.2 is the fastest qualifying time we've ever seen in the four times that we've come to Monaco. And I expect if one of the better drivers hooks up a lap today, that will be beaten. But we'll have to see if anyone does that, and if so, who it might be. And Ninja has actually just beaten that mark. So 1.09. 9-2 for him. We've seen him have considerable pace in previous Grand Prix. That's a good opener. Harry does well. He is the, the fastest man on the medium tyres currently. Half a second faster than DJ Marshall, but a full one second away from Ken, the guy in front of him on soft tyres. So, big work to do. Maybe the strategy will come into play there. Harry, again, what is the strategy you're looking for around here? To not do as many stops as possible, basically. That is my only <laughs> strat. <laughs> Right, yes, yeah, so less front wings are better. We do always have the uh, the yearly competition of who can pit the most at Monaco. It's usually about five or six pit stops that wins it, so keep an eye out on that today. Bullet Boy going round now on the soft tyre as Luke, about a half a lap ago, managed to slot himself into third. So third or fifth for the Alpha Tower boys. Doing well in the constructors. These guys have been scoring regularly into the points every single race. Uh, Luke had a great one last time. That was on Harry, who had one of the most confusing races we've ever seen in France. He was about six laps down, <laughs> apparently, but he wasn't. He finished in, was it fifth, sixth place? Incredible fifth. scenes. Yeah. Go have a little watch of it. It's a, it's a mental one. Um, oh, no, a bullet was running to the back of Purple Petra on his, on his lap round. No damage, no con proper contact, but he's had to really slow down because of traffic. Can he go into provisional pole, though, up to the line? No! It is P2 right behind Ninja, who's at a 109.2. So that lap currently looks like a good lap from Ninja. And Aspect slots only, only 11th. We've, we've seen this from Aspect. Actually, we were discussing this before we came live on air. It's that Aspect, a man that is able to climb through the field, a man that regularly scores good points, but his qualifying is not to the same level I think that he would want as his race pace. Regularly struggles to get inside the top eight when qualifying, and he... Out of all the tracks, Monaco is the track you don't want that to happen. And he might be punished again here. Currently only 11th. I was on board with DJ Marshall and he left the session. So apparently that's a bad omen and I shouldn't go on board with DJ Marshall. <laughs> <anymore>. <laughs> Poor Deej, you've already cursed him. Sorry about that. Lopez is the only man out on an absolute proper flyer at the moment. 
He's actually got Ken in front of him, who's the other person, I think, on a lap. But this is Lopez's well, first chance. He's also on the medium. Sorry, Ben, what are you going to say? Uh, yeah, just Teske in front of the pair of them. He's on a lap as well, and he's only 10th at the moment, so you'd expect he'll be able to improve quite significantly. Let's go on board with Heskey. Heskey actually not improving in his first sector, but almost identical to his previous run time. That was a real crofty Brundle moment there, folks, if you didn't notice. I said something completely wrong, and Ben, the patient, kind soul that he is, corrected me without saying I was wrong. Five tenths up in the middle sector is Heskey. He's really putting pedal to the metal. Notice how that doesn't rhyme. How do they make that rhyme? Americans, that's how. Currently, though, with the current improvements, he wouldn't change position. He's only he's eight tenths behind DJ, only improving by five tenths. He does cross the line. And goes P2. What a great final sector he had. Three seconds of improvement. What a time. He's only three tenths away from Provisional Pole Ninja. Lopez goes ninth on the medium tyre, so he's just behind her Puli boy on that same compound. It does seem as if that medium is not giving an opportunity to get high enough off the grid, but Heskey has got form here. He won here last time. Ninja, though, has gone even quicker. Another tenth he's knocked off his time. Luke on an absolute flyer through the first sector is really leaving nothing on the track there. Right up against the wall at multiple corners. And he's up by three tenths in the first sector. So that absolute commitment is paying off. And something that I'm absolutely loving on this track from our boys is that everyone is stopping well off the racing line when there's a car right behind them. It is great to see that people are being respectful of the laps. It's so hard to do around here on an online race. We haven't got the real radio, of course. We don't have the full team spotters and these guys are really making it easy for another to be competitive, to be fair. It's great to see. Really tough through there to make sure that you keep on the track limits, but Luke manages it and now he's off through what is a really tricky harbour section around Monaco. He's still up, not enough as, as much as he would like, but he is still improving about three tenths overall. This would possibly put him into the top four if he can carry the time through sector three. Taze is another one on a lap. He is currently four and a half tenths up, but he was distracted by a car directly in front of him. So he's invalidated. Luke has improved to sixth place and he's so close between Jack Kiki and Taze. They are less than a tenth between those three cars. I think Apuli boy is about to cross the line. Obviously not content with his time that he set on the medium compound, even though he was the leader on that compound in P8. He's going to improve to P2. Ooh. What a lap. Apuli boy absolutely laying it down. We know that him and his teammate are often very, very close. And if they want to carry on like that again this weekend, then Lopez is going to have to pull something out of the bag. Now a second and a half between the two Ferrari boys. Yeah, those two in direct competition for P4 in the championship with Cade not appearing in the last few Grand Prix. The opportunity is there. It's there for Luke as well. So those three likely going to go down to the wire for that championship position. Jack Hickey now has got two corners left to go on his lap. P8 for him at the moment. Yeah, he was on big improvement as well. He was eight tenths up from the middle sector. This could be a top three time if it all comes together. Ooh. And it is second place. Jack Hickey, less than one tenth behind Ninja, who still holds on to that provisional pole with the very fingertips of that Mercedes. Jack Hickey, Hapuli Boy, Heskey, all getting so close. There's so many more fast guys yet to improve, you imagine. Bullet Boy can still go faster. Lopez, we know he's a quick guy. Harry could pull something out of the bag. Harry, of course, one of the few pole as we have this season that isn't bullet boy or toxic it was a terrible fluke but you know the guy managed it <laughs> i mean you're talking to harry Eid. harry r remind me what is your podium success rate here uh 100 mate of course it is <laughs> one out of one he's, he's a is our true legend of the place and he's just got out of the way for Emil Heskey, Aston Villa legend, who's on a lap right now. Currently sat P4, but he's not too close to the barriers there. He just uh, he hasn't had any substantial damage from it, but that did seem to slow him down a little bit. Oh, he's oh, hit the wall. He's, he's running round. He's the wrong way round. He's, and Harris had to go straight through the chicane to avoid him. But uh, that's another lap gone. That anyway. Yeah, I mean, true. That's <laughs> classic Harry, that is. Um, <laughs> Heskey will have to either come back to the pit, stick on a new set of tyres and go again. He's got a bit of time in the bank, so he shouldn't be too disheartened. But the lap was looking good. Yeah, he'll be frustrated with that one. Um, I, I still think he's got a few temps in it, so he might be the biggest competition to Ninja for that pole. DJ Marshall has had an absolute clangor through the first sector. He is now a full one second down on his lap time. Not going Ken. his way in Ken. 
Ken goes up to fourth place. Looking super competitive in the later stages of the season is Ken. Yeah, fourth place would not be a terrible place to start this Grand Prix. Not by a long shot, but he might still need to improve on one more run, considering the guys behind him. I wouldn't be surprised at all if you do see the likes of Heskey and Bullet move ahead of that time that's currently set by Ken. It's about who gets out of the optimum moment. I think one of the Ferraris has started to make a move. I think her Puli boy might... Oh, no, one of the Alphas has just jumped in front there. Sneaky Jack Hickey, I think, has just got in front of her Puli boy. <laughs> <laughs> Very well known. Those guys right next to each other currently in the timesheet as well. Jack Hickey provisionally second. Hapuli Boy provisionally third. And I think Bullet Boy has also gone right out behind them. Jack Hickey gets out of the way. There's a Haas rapidly approaching the back of them. I think that's Gravity on a lap. Gravity had his best performance hey. out in France as well last time out. So the man is looking to carry on a good performance. Ninja's flying through the first sector, took advantage of every single inch of the track he could, and he's two temps up in that first sector alone, but he does have a lot of traffic ahead of him still to navigate. He's got Hapuli uh, and Gravity just ahead. Gravity might well stay ahead due to him being on a lap, but Ninja looking to get into the 108 here. Gravity and Ninja rapidly approaching the Nouvelle Chicane. The issue for Ninja is if he closes too much on Gravity, which he's going to do, because Gravity's tapped the wall and lost his front wing, this can really hamper what could be the... No, his Gravity pulls out the way. That's worked out brilliantly. That has worked out brilliantly for Ninja, who is now flying and improving. Half a tip up through the second sector. Can he just knock himself into the 108? The first man to do so. Is he going to be able to really cement that provisional pole? DRS is open. He's coming down the start finish straight. No. He's slowing it down. He's out of petrol, I think. Runs out of fuel on the line and won't improve. Well, so now the gauntlet has been laid down. Everyone needing to beat that time. The Ninja couldn't quite improve on despite that brilliant first sector. The problem is with all of these guys going out pretty much at the same time is if there is an incident in somewhere like the swimming pool or the or the hairpin, the Lowe's hairpin, it can lead to congestion. It can lead to um, laps being spoiled behind. So they need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, you need to be careful. You never know. You might find a wild Nico Rosberg in the runoff section as well. Anything could crop up here at Monaco. Bullet Boy out on a lap there. He's pushing hard. He's going through the tunnel now up to the Nouvelle Chicane. And we've seen there multiple times already this session alone that that is where mistakes are easily made. You can cut the tracking and gain any validation. You can hit the inside of that wall and invalidate the lap. He's made it through cleanly though. And this is why Bullet Boy is fighting for the top of the championship. He's going through that middle sector. Is he improving? Yes. He's two and a half. Steps up. That's not enough to take him to the top spot currently. Maybe he's got a lot of time to gain in that third sector. Oh, he's hit the wall. Raskas has been the end of Bullet Boy. He will not improve in this section. The highest he starts is P6. Hepuli and Hickey have both invalidated their lap time, so they are not going to improve either. Ken, I'm not sure if he's going to improve. It's about whether he makes the line or not. Heskey in sector one is Taze. exactly the same time as what his first lap was. Taze goes up to sixth. Ken will not get another lap. He's finished his session. But Heskey is literally neck and neck on his best time. Maybe his, all of his improvement comes in the second and third sector. Luke is going to be next across the line. He deals with Raskas okay. And then Anthony Lowe in the final corner. So he's about to cross the line. He's got some improving to do. And he does improve. It's up to P4. That's a very good lap for Luke. If he doesn't get beat, I'm sure he'll be very happy with that. Heskey is three tenths up though. And this could be enough Lopez. to see him on the front row. Lopez goes into fifth place. All the places are changing now. And Bullet Boy is almost outside the top ten. Heskey round the final corner. DRS open. He's flying towards the straight. Can he take pole? Heskey goes third. Oh. It's so close between our top four. Less than two tenths separate them. And you feel that that might just be it. Yeah, no one else apart from Harry E is on a lap and he's pulled into the pit lane. We'll do no better than 12th. Ninja takes pole here at Monaco with Jack Hickey in second place and Emil Heskey, Aston Villa and England legend, third with a Puli Boy in fourth. That's a good session, folks. Let's see what the race holds. Thirty-nine laps around the streets of Monaco await our seventeen drivers. It's a daunting challenge, but perhaps not for Ninja. Great qualifying lap saw him get pole position ahead of Jack Hickey by just under a tenth of a second. Jack Hickey, three races at Monaco. 
third, second, and second. Can he finally claim that elusive win here at the streets of Monaco? Heskey starts third. That's exactly where he started when he won the race last time out here. Hapuli Boy is going to start from fourth, and you've got that challenge for fourth place for the championship between Hapuli in fourth, Luke in fifth, and Lopez in sixth. So Hapuli with the advantage after qualifying there. Ken is going to start from seventh place. Didn't score at the last race in France, snapping a nine race streak of scoring. So he'll be looking to get back in the top ten today. Taze is going to start from eighth. That's exactly where he finished last time out. Clearly not doing the war that particularly well, though. <laughs> wow. Bullet Boy is going to start from ninth in a race where Toxic, his championship rival, does not race. He needs to be at least fifth place, if not higher. DJ Marshall rounds out the top ten. He's finished P2 here before. And then everyone outside the top ten is on medium tyres. Aspect is going to start from P11. Harry Eid had a podium here last time. Can you guess where he started? It was P12. Main is going to start from P13. Purple Petrol starts from P14, Infinity from P15, and then the back two on the grid. CH55 Max is going to start from P16, and Gravity, after his best race and qualifying in France, is going to start from the back of the grid here. Dang, it baffles me how you store these facts in your brain, but that is why you are the resident stat man. Um, folks, we say it's going to be night time. I think we're going to race from dusk till dawn. The jewel of the crown is going to get smoky dark and then we're going to see that sun rise again. Hopefully, if I've set it out correctly. Anyway, here we go. The five red lights build. You can see them there in the distance. It's Ninja versus Hickey. Who gets down to set the bomb? Who commits some heroics? Lights out and away we go. And Bullet Boy has taken them all. There we go, well away. He's stopped. Oh, yeah, it's not gone well. But it looks like Jack Hickey's had a better start. And he's in lead. No! Yes! No! Sorry, Ninja! Almost the wrong way round going out of turn one. Jack Hickey gets into the lead. That was so scary. And he's tried to dive it back down the inside. You'll remember that someone made an absolutely incredible move into Mirabeau on season one. Can it happen again? No, not this time. Heskey stayed in third. I probably wanted four. Oh, Look, almost damage. There's some damage there. We're all a bit of carnage. Ben, what have you seen Ooh. further back? Well, I've seen Taze hit the barrier. I've seen Lopez go straight into the back of Taze. Virtual safety cars come out. And we've already had five penalties up and down the grid. I thought Ninja was going to try and move up the inside of what I believe is Massane, which would have been not nothing short of suicide at that, but it would have almost certainly led to the pair of them crashing. Fortunately, he didn't get enough of his car alongside, but uh, good starts from Aspect from Taze. Uh, not so good from Bullet Boy, but of course he's not in the session. Yeah, this is pretty much devastating for any chance that Bullet Boy has to win the championship. And Lopez is having a torrid time, even under the VSC. He's popping into the wall. He's got almost no front wing. If the VSC lasts, though, he could get himself a free pit stop. Which you never know. If you make the tyres work on hards, he could possibly go all the way to the end. Unlikely, but we'll see. Yeah, we know how important track position is here, so it might be worth him going for a pair of hard tyres. And look... Luke's just got past the Pooley Boy because the Pooley Boy's got a drive through penalty for speeding under the VSC. I think he's dramatically stopped in order to erase that penalty unsuccessfully. And because of that, Luke has just skipped by. So he's lost the position and got the penalty. Yeah, that is pretty gutting for her Pooley Boy, but great. You know, ability to take advantage of something that sat there waiting for you from Luke. He's really seized the day. He's up to fourth, and now he's right on the back of Heskey. Heskey probably having the quietest race out of the entire top ten currently. Car fully intact, staying in the same place, motoring on. It's Ninja and Hickey up front, less than a second between them. But the fight is here between third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. They are all so close together. Yeah, and to focus on Heskey, that's kind of how he won when we came here in the Spring Sprint Championship. It was a really important victory for him, one that pretty much led him to the championship that season. So he'll be looking to do a very similar thing today. And if H Hickey and Ninja have some sort of an incident out front, Heskey is in the prime position to take advantage. Ninja right on the back of Hickey, no DRS, and of course you need DRS to pass here unless the person in front of you makes a mistake, or you could do a legendary lunge down into Maribo, but again, really tough to pull off there, only the, the best of the best make that one work. We are three laps in, this is the longest race in terms of laps that you will see all season, 39 laps is a, of course, lengthy, and Ninja is applying the pressure to Hickey, he's now got DRS, but Hickey's got a lot of ERS saved up. He's not using it either, which is interesting. It looks as though he's got the legs on the Mercedes in a straight line down that start finish straight. The most ideal overtaking place is into Saint-Devant. 
we know how difficult overtaking can be here and Hickey you know his defense is going to be as stout as ever Hickey one of the best defenders we have in this league so Ninja if he wants to get past and where he might try that remains to be seen he is going to have to put everything into that overtake aspect with a penalty to his name is hounding Taze. Oh, it's a lock up from Taze as well, but Ooh. that has not opened the door. And Ninja, the man fighting at the front, picks up a three second time penalty. So that's not going to help the race. We've got yellow flags in sector three. And if that's gravity, yeah, gravity, no front wing in the middle sector. He drives through his own front wing to get out of it. And he's now driving around with just the nose co. And there's a safety, safety car. car. We have a full course safety car. The yellows are fully waved. And this is going to actually really help the likes of Mania and Gravity. But will Jack Hickey, will Ninja, will Heskey come in? The nice thing for Hickey and Ninja, they've got space already. Five seconds is the gap. They can probably get in and get out if everyone else comes in quite comfortably. Soft tyres, you want to get them off as soon as possible if you can. If this was a bit later on, it would be a no-brainer to come into the pits. But you do have a slight decision to make here because it is much earlier than you would want Hickey it to in. be. Hickey and Ninja both in. I think Hickey tried to Heskey's make out. both options possible uh, for as long as possible. But yeah, like you say, Heskey deciding now is not the time. Uh, Ninja on the hard tyres. Hickey is on the... Well... Hard tyres. Wow, okay, double hard but tire from the front guys out. there. Yeah, big time. He's behind Taze and CH55. Man. Now, this is... Man, I can't believe I'm saying this. Harry E, the biggest beneficiary of what's going on there. Starting on the medium tire. Doesn't need to come in, of course, because those tires can run much longer. And he's currently in third place. Um, the Red Bull team currently sit first, second, and third as an entire family unit. You've done quite well, Harry. That's, that's worked out quite nicely. The good thing for Hickey and where he is at the moment is that even though Ninja and Taze are ahead of him on the same strategy, there is at least a penalty for both of those guys. So Ninja does have three seconds. Uh, Taze, I think, has five seconds to his name. So it's not completely over for Hickey, but track position, as we have alluded to a number of times, is so important. He had it beforehand. Now he doesn't. Yeah, the issue again for Hickey, whereas this benefits Ninja, is he's obviously got that penalty. Well, there's damage there for someone. Uh, the Mercedes are perfectly picked, I think, just picked oh. up front wing damage. And, and now Jack, Jack Kiki's got a penalty. Yeah, severe collision with Perfectly Pete, who I think went straight into the back of him. And I think Jack Kiki's picked up the penalty. So I wonder if we'll see a submission for that at the end of the race. We sometimes do. So um, not all done and dusted. But I was just about to say that Ninja could possibly pull out the three seconds needed because of track position. But maybe he doesn't oh. need to now. Well, I think the opportunity is there to build out much more than three seconds if Jack Hickey can't get past Taze and Hapuli Boy. Yeah. I'd, I'd imagine Hapuli will come into the pits relatively quickly. This really hasn't worked out well for Hapuli at all, but Taze is on the same strategy, so Hickey's going to have to make that overtake on track. Now, gravity is still sandwiched between Heskey and Luke. Um, on the game, I'm not certain if they usher the lapped cars through. Um... And if that's the case, then Heskey is going to be able to bolt away from the two Alpha Tauris behind him. While uh, Hesky, well, Gravity, theoretically, either gets in the way or pulls immediately in front of people. It's, it's going to be a difficult call because around here, lap cars are troublesome. We're already about to finish lap seven. Oh, no, safety car's coming lap. anyway. It's got fed up with waiting. It's decided I want to see some racing. So here we go. Regardless, sorry, Ken, you've got to hurry up, mate, or you're going to be uh, a long way back. But we're about to go racing. And Heskey becomes the de facto safety car. Warming them tyres. He's got Gravity, the lapped car right behind him. Remember that. Gravity is a lapped car. Sandwich between first and second. Luke and Harry need to dispatch of Gravity very quickly. Otherwise, uh, Heskey will get away. He goes around the last corner at full speed. And he's away. There he goes. Luke already on the back of Gravity. And he's got him away. Oh. And Harry can't capitalise on that either. He's a little too far back. Now, what happens with Gravity? Does he put out the way? No, Gravity stays in the way for longer. This is awful for the Alpha Tauri boys. Yeah, Gravity needs to get out of the way as soon as possible, really, because, well, he's being blue flagged. He'll probably get a penalty for it if he stays in front much longer. Blue flag. Heskey has already managed to pull out a two-second lead because of this. Gravity, of course, on the hard tyres as well. So those softs won't be done and dusted. He's so slow around the loads hairpin. The guys are almost running Ooh. into each other. Yeah, Max very nearly going into the back of Harry. If He, he might have well done. I'm not quite sure. He was very close regardless. Uh, but Max is doing the job of holding up Ninja at the moment. So that will please the likes of Hickey and Leroy. Whoa, Whoa that's front wing damage for someone there. Ooh. 
Uh, Luke. Luke's got damage and Gravity gets a, a time penalty for ignoring the blue flag. So if Harry's clever, he can get past Luke and have a bit of clean air in front of him to run up to the back of Heskey on those wearing soft tyres. And this is the section where you start picking up penalties. There's a lot of very close corners to run over here. And Raskas, as we've seen, is a real minefield for accidents. So you've got to be careful going through there. Harry is gaining on Luke, but it's not enough. Luke's managing to hold on. I got a bit of damage myself. Oh, it's not ideal for the Alpha Tauri, guys. Confirmation there is damage. We've got yellow flags in sector three. I'm not sure who it is. Big figure two, maybe? I'm not sure. I mean, Taze seemed to be involved in some sort of incident yeah, because wing. Taze has come into the pits out of nowhere. Harry four tenths away from Luke. It looks like the Alpha Tauri are having a scrap on themselves, but CH Max is able to hold up Ninja. And there's about two seconds between Max and the Alpha Tauris. And it looks like the damage on Luke's car is a bit worse than on Harry's. Harry's still at both his end plates, unlike Luke, who's missing the front right. Yeah, and this is all benefiting Heskey because those tyres. Oh, are still they're side by the... side in the tunnel! Harry Whoa. scrapes through! My god, that was on the on the on the edge of being an absolute disaster for both teammates. Oh Harry, that must have been a bit of a poo in the pants moment. I think he was letting me through, but I um I that you was just squeaky it. bum time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as we uh, we then follow through to back Louis Sharon, the PC into Raskas. Um you could tell that I brought the track back up so I can remember the names. Uh, and yep. it's, uh, it's gone well. Harry, you look like you clipped the wall again a little bit there going through the final sector, but the damage is okay? Yeah, I think so. Purple P with another time penalty as well. They're really starting to roll in. You can see there, new graphic, of course, that a lot of the grid have picked up the little black and white flag. And Ninja right on the back of Max now goes down the inside, and he's got the move done. Someone who is in a potentially good position as well, actually, Luke as Luke does go into the pits. Um, DJ Marshall, he's within one second of Jack Hickey and on the exact same strategy. Yeah, and now moves up to seventh as well because of Luke pitting and applying a new front wing. This is where you can make up a lot of time around Monaco. If you don't need a new front wing, you will gain three, four seconds in each pit stop that you make. And you can bet your bottom dollar there's going to be more than two or three pit stops per drive around here. Yeah, you would imagine so. Um, and we usually find that one safety car does lead to multiple safety cars. So whether we see it again uh, remains to be seen. Luke is going to come down uh, out in 12th place, which considering bunching up the, the field as a result of the safety car makes sense. Um, questionable whether the decision to stay out was worth it or not. I guess we'll, we'll soon find out. Ninja right on the back of Harry. So the speed that, uh, that Ninja has around here is quite apparent. And Harry with that little bit of damage. And on those medium tyres that are starting to wear. Not looking too pacey in comparison to Ninja on the fresher hard tyres. Kapuli's made his first uh, proper pit stop of the race. He did have a drive-through penalty earlier on. He goes on to the medium tyres. This is just after Jack Hickey and DJ Marshall passed him on circuit. Ninja not being silly. No silly dives into Maribo. Lowe's hairpin as well. Keeping it clean. Harry doing a great job just holding the driver behind. Heskey has stayed out for another lap. So the guy's trying to convert it into a one stop. I imagine if he gets it to lap 16 or 17, he could go onto the hard tyres for 20 laps or so, and he'll be able to make it to the end. That's clever thinking from Heskey. To be honest, I think he'd go on the hard tyres now and he'd get to the end. The, the recommended strategy is it's soft to hard tyres after 10 laps. So Heskey's actually done more laps than it was expected, at least according to Co-Master's strategy. Well, Co-Master strategy is a bit like Ferrari strategy. We never really know when that one's going to pay off. Sorry, Lopez so nearly found himself eating barrier. He lost it uh, just before Mirabeau recovers just about and gets back on the uh, uh, up until DJ Marshall. So, yeah, Lopez nearly went into the wall, but everything, crisis averted. It's a real Monogasque specialty, that is, uh, Armco barrier. Has Heskey made a mistake? Possibly, because well, that gap's only three seconds now. Let's check his car for damage. No, he's all right. He picked up a time penalty, Ooh. though. So Harry, the only man in the top three to not have any time penalties to his name. And a big lockup. I wonder if those tyres are gone. Yeah, he's in. So Heskey comes into the pit lane. That will release Harry and Ninja to now take the lead. And what tyres is Heskey? Heskey's on the mediums. Heskey goes on to the medium tyres. That is controversial. 
Yeah, I think that will be fine. Those medium tyres are a lot more durable than the soft tyres. I don't think Heskey will making another stop uh, unless situations uh, make it make that acceptable. Uh, I think he'll go to the end on those. Here comes Heskey. The Heskey comes out in front of Luke. He is behind Ken and Aspect. He's got a lovely bit of fresh air though. So when the guys that are in front or behind him pit, they should theoretically come out in that gap as well. DJ Marshall overtakes CH55 Max and Lopez looks to be following the floor into Maribo. Locks the brakes, but he does make it through and the McLaren starts to tumble down the order. Max is the wrong well, way round at the, at the Nobel chicane. That could be a safety car. Well, Max was letting Ken and Aspect through even though he had no reason to. Um, and as a result of letting them through, he spun. Well, that's pretty disappointing. Um, Ooh, D DJ's in. That's I interesting. I wonder why DJ's in. I wonder if DJ's picked up damage and everything that kind of went on there. Um, new front, yeah, new front wing for oh. DJ. So he's picked up damage and he's serving a penalty as well. That's gutting because Deej was in a pretty good spot as well. Well, it is Monaco. There's a long way to go. We're not even at half race distance. And uh, you never know. A lot more mistakes could come your way. A safety car could really help you out. We've seen it before. And if you watched Monaco last year, you will know DJ Marshall always scores points at Monaco. Why? Because it's the law. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while since we've heard that. It's the law. It is the written law of Formula One. And Ninja, my God, he is literally all over Harry Eid like some flies on a mouldy bit of bread. Not Pitt Ooh. again. Ninja, uh, oh, Purple P, sorry. It's dangerous to go out of the way. And then Ken's gone into the wall and Heskey's had to uh, divert his car around the wreckage. And now he's going to go for a move into the Nobel chicane. Bit of late braking. Yes, he does. He's locked it up on the inside, but Ken gives him the room he needs. And Heskey up to fifth. That's worked out brilliantly for Heskey. Yeah, that's good stuff from him. Um... Yeah, just as I was saying, the, the top six, uh, the top five, I guess now, Heskey's not going to pit again. Hickey and Ninja might pit again, not too sure. Uh, we know that Harry definitely has to pit again, and Lopez almost certainly will. Ninja looks very close now as we come up towards Casino, but Harry's doing a great job. I know Ninja stuck his nose down the inside, giving him a little nudge, but it's not going enough. Oh, it's a little bit of argy bargy. Oh, oh they're now wheel to wheel going down to Maribo. Harry with the inside line, and he's holding on. You love to see oh. Hazard E deploying the absolute 15 year old Cornish boy strats oh. there and pulling it back into first. Ninja must be kicking himself. H-N-O-I Having yes. none of it You absolutely <laughs> love to see Yeah sorry Purple Petrol has retired from the Grand Prix Which is a massive shame um, Sorry that Purple P is no longer in the Grand Prix Guys please keep watching I know it must seem like there's no point anymore But there is <laughs> Harry I'm imagining you're going to come in very soon just debating when to. I was kind of hoping for a safety car. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he oh, now oh, joins no. the rank of penalty holders. And uh, so, that for another lap, Ninja's going to be fuming. So be absolutely fuming in that helmet. Yeah, I think that gap between the two of them has been stuck stationary at about three tenths. We go again. For the last ten laps. Um, yeah, Ninja didn't get a good run, though. He... he Got a snap of overs there coming out of the corner, so he's not going to be quite as close as he was to Harry the previous oh, turn. Oh, it's contact! Oh. That's damage! Damage for Ninja, he's taking the front wing off there because he's tried to go for a different line. And now he's going to send it down the inside of Maribo and does. He's got fed up with waiting. Harry, well done, sees the position after what was a bit of a uh, aggressive start. But Jack kicking out right on the back of it all. Yeah, that's one person who's going to be appreciating the fight uh, is Jack Hickey. And it's roles reverse now as Jack Hickey... Safety car! Stare Harry, you must be absolutely livid! Not livid, I need to stop. Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's still going to benefit you massively. But it'd be nice if you can hold on to that lead. But Ninja goes through, of course. The difference is Ninja will definitely have to replace that front wing. Harry, you can going to replace yours. Nah. I mean, deal with it. Deal with it. It'll be interesting it. if uh, the likes of Hickey come in for fresh medium tyres or not. It's definitely an option. Harry, I assume you're going on to the hards. Correct. Here we go. Let's see how the order shapes up. A lot of people could benefit out of this. DJ Marshall could be one of them, of course. Not been oh. on those tyres very long. And Ninja is Hickey's in. Hickey's staying out. Hickey stays out on those hard tyres. We know those hards can go to the ending. It's all about track position here at Monaco. So even on worn tyres, man can make anyway. it work. 
Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> a new front wing. And you've got a lot of traffic starting to come down the lane. Whoop. Ninja is out in front of you, so you guys stay the same way around, but Lopez has jumped a lot of you. Luke up to third, Heskey up to second, Hickey now takes the lead. Hapuni Boy also looks like he's just gone out in front of the guys here. Yeah, Ninja and Harry slotting behind. Are we sure that Jack Hickey's hard tyres are going to be able to do 34 laps? Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio Jack Hickey Perez on the tyre wear over here. Yeah, Jack will be fine. All aboard the Yarno Trilly train. Jack Kiki will see you to your station. But of course, he will be the leading carry. That man has got every chance of picking up his second victory this season. Yeah, and Jack Hickey and Monaco just go together like bangers and mash. It is ridiculous how good he goes here. <laughs> season two, he finished third place. Season three, he finished runner-up. He actually won on track, but a post-race penalty meant he was demoted to P2. Uh, and he also finished P2 in the Spring Sprint Championship the last time we were here. So three races, three podiums, no wins yet, but it just proves how competitive he is here. Safety car is in this lap, so the... the but Mylander is more than satisfied that the guys are bunched up. And Jack Hickey now, for this time, leads the guys into what will be the full green racing. We're going to go racing again very soon. We're coming through up to Raskas. And let's see if Jack Hickey's restart is any different to the way Heskey did it last Ooh. time out. Oh, Taze has oh, gone into... Oh, everywhere. Yeah, Taze has gone into the back of... Uh, Lopez? Of Luke, possibly. Yeah, there's I'm some not sure if Harry down there. Well, not mine, anyway. Taze nope. is straight in. Taze comes in, so there you go. He's going to repair those tyres. And away he goes. Jack Kickey leads them off. Heskey did not get a great restart. A second already. Back to Jack Kickey, but the tyre difference is huge. Heskey should be able to close that gap. Lucas had a terrible run in behind, but maybe he's got more damage after what happened there under the restart. Yeah, he's missing a front end plate. So Lopez will be Ooh. licking his lips like a fresh bucking of KFC stuck in front of him. And he's through. Down the inside of Mirabeau. He's on the podium. Yeah, Lopez oh got... Ooh. Ninja. D Whoa, Ninja. Whoa. A mission. He is on a mission. He is not... He's not playing it safe around Monaco. Let's put it that way. And yeah, it looks as if he will get past Luke if he gets a decent run out of this corner. I'm not... It is easy to do there and lose the front wing. They bunch up so much more than you expect. I did exactly the same thing in Season 3. So it, it does look as if at least two drivers have been caught out by that. Luke's going quite well, actually, through the final sector, despite a lack of downforce. Luke will not want a pit right now. This is not ideal straight after a safety car. Does he come in? No, he stays out, so he's going to hassle. Ninja's been stuck behind two Alpha Tauris all race long, each one with a minor bit of damage, and he's doing it again here. Can he down the inside of Sacramon? He sent the heroics. Oh, he's in the wall. That's a car out. That oh. was Ninja absolutely turfing Luke into the wall. That is Luke's race over. Safety and we've got car. another full course safety car. My God, that was a bit of an assassination from the Ninja. And of course, Aspect picks up another penalty for a severe collision with DJ Marshall. It just wouldn't what be late breaking. What are you two doing? These guys st <laughs> still right next to each other. But of course, the law is that DJ Marshall will score points. And thankfully, Gravity, Purple P, Max, Taze and Luke have all retired to really give DJ the chance of scoring points. Just Infinity and Mainer outside of the points now. Well, I mean, he's only got to finish the race and he's done it. And we've got 12 left at this point. So keep going, Deej. You'll be all right. Go on, lad. Get your graves ready. It is the law. I feel partly responsible for Luke's demise in this race because I think I might have riled up Ninja too much. Well, he you're was like, right. Alpha Tower's going to get it. Your very presence riles up the most calm of people, Harry. So I'm not <laughs> surprised. <laughs> I'm going to kill think him of that safety car is in this lap we will go racing again that's the third safety car we've seen and uh, jack hickey and heskey stay as they were but lopez is the man that is going to be really pressuring these guys and now ninja is past luke as well will ninja cause the front three to crumble or uh, will they be able to hold on of course those front three relative veterans now jack hickey season one lopez season one heskey came in not too late after them and we're away and uh jack hickey's like a pretty bad start actually heskey's right on the back of him ers being deployed he falls to the outside of send them on and ha jack hickey defends well we've seen it time after time again Ooh, jack hickey is so over. good no heskey slips on through like a slippery little fish out of the monaco sea 
and he's up into first place. Jack Hickey can't get the traction on his old hard tyres. And Lopez is now the man that looks to attack. And Ninja right on the back of both of them. Hey, oh, Lopez, Ninja. be careful. Ooh. Be careful. Um, yeah, Jack Hickey. I mean, his strategy was wholly based on him keeping the lead ahead of Heskey in that first lap. He, his strategy is few is purely primed towards defense so now he's he's behind Heskey and he's got to defend p2 uh from lopez and ninja for the second time this race Heskey finds himself in the lead with a car that is arguably essentially damaged behind him he uh, jack hickey running on ties so much older than everyone else up and down the grid that it's just going to allow hickey to pull away a gap in front of him lopez is literally pushing hickey through the final sector of this race Maybe he can do exactly what Heskey did last time out. Jack Hickey could find his way down the field very quickly if he's not careful. Yeah, and it is that fight between track position and the tyre life. I'm not sure if it's going to pay off for Jack Hickey. Those hard tyres are three times as old as the guys behind. And they are a compound worse. Here we go. We're going up to Casino. And Lopez is literally having to come off the throttle because it's all over. And Ninja's trying to go down the inside of Lopez, who at the same time is trying to go around the outside of Jack Hickey. Yeah, Lopez needs to be careful, first of all, making a move on Jack Hickey to ensure it's clean, but also that he doesn't have to try an, an attempt. And Ninja is right there to get past him. Yeah, her pretty boy and Harry and Bullet Boy, actually, all right behind. Bullet Boy could lock himself into keeping this championship alive at this rate. Ninja as well. We're going to see him get a little bit impatient once again. DRS is now enabled and of course Hickey won't have it. So there you go. Lopez activates it. So does Ninja. And the gap is closing. ERS is available. Jack Hickey goes to the inside. Lopez tries to take around the outside. Switches back. Can't get the better run. And then literally nose to tail going up the hill. This is exhilarating stuff, folks. Ninja is trying to go any way he can. But of course, the moment he gets past Lopez, if he does, he's then got to get past Hickey. The same thing could happen to him. And we saw that Lopez was pretty much dead on three tenths away from Jack Hickey as he came out of the final corner of the lap. And in any other circuit, three tenths plus DRS is going to be more than enough to make an overtake into turn one. Monaco's the exception. Even that close coming out of the final corner, Lopez couldn't make a move. Yeah, Lopez needs to build up his ERS for a couple of laps. Oh, no, a dive. Oh, it looked like he was uh, debating a dive into the new Bell Chicane. Jack Hickey again, placing his car perfectly, oh. and Ninja picks up a time penalty. That's all going to help the final race result if they're all this close together at the end. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I have no doubt that if Ninja was able to exercise his true pace out front, he would get rid of that three seconds very quickly, but he's not in that position at all. He is stuck behind Lopez. He's stuck behind Jack Hickey, where three seconds is oh, a lifetime. in the wall. Ninja's in the wall. Ninja is in the wall. And he's parked it on the start-finish straight. Oh, Virtual safety yes, car. Yeah. And he's retired. And that means Mainer will now pick up points here. Ninja has had enough after assassinating one team member and then binging it. He's out of here. Now it's a really difficult situation. You've got Jack Hickey who will desperately want to get off those tyres if he can. But he's just going to lose so much in terms of track position. He probably won't make it around, actually, for when the VSC ends anyway. But if it did present itself as an opportunity, I don't think it's going to be worth it. Yeah, we're off again. And there is a wow. drive-through penalty for Aspect as well. So Aspect really racking up the penalties as well. But Lopez right at the back of Hicking out. Would he go for a dive into the Nouvelle Chicane? Goes round the outside. He hits the wall. Jack Hickey covers off once again. That man... And it's like the defensive king, you know, the guy can just pulling out the bag at every corner. It is ridiculous how good he is at placing the car where it needs to go on the exit of a corner to stop you getting around him. And he holds on again. These tyres are 14 laps older than the guy behind him. Harry, you're struggling a little bit. You've got Bullet Boy right up your chuff. Yeah, I'm not enjoying these hard tyres, can't lie. Jack Hickey slow out the exit of the new Velsha K, but it's so hard to get anything done into the back. Yeah, I think with your situation, Harry, whilst the safety car did come out time-wise all right because you needed to make a pit stop, whereas others around you didn't necessarily have to, you the, the ideal strategy would have been to put on a set of mediums from where you were at, and you couldn't do so because that's what you started on. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. 
Lopez. Looks like he's fallen off the back of Jack Kick. He just got a little bit on that, that lap. The gap was not its usual three to four tenths. It was closer to one second going through Raskas. He's right there in the twiggly bits in the first sector. But he can't seem to get this move done. And the longer Jack Kiki stays out, the more those medium tyres are going to age. And that means Lopez won't be able to pull off any daring moves. Behind Hickey Bullet to boy. make that work. Bullet Boy going trying around the outside of Harry E with Ken Justin behind these guys as well. There's contact. Ooh. Ken's hit the back of Bullet Boy. And DJ Marshall needs to be careful because he could be... Oh! Ken is Ooh. weaving all the way around the place. DJ just needs to be careful there. He's currently possibly on for a seventh place if Ken has to pit. But he does not want to pick up front wing damage himself. He just oh, does. He Straight well into the done. wall. Yeah, he has. He's lost his front end plate. That is for more front wing damage. DJ stays out, though. Yeah, Lopez is... He's following oh. him right Oh, up. round, round the outside! Oh, go on, Lopez. Go on, Lopez. Go, no. Jack Kiki again. Holds on. Oh, I admire the effort. Heskey, eight seconds out front now with only five laps to go. It's looking more and more likely that Heskey, once again from third on the grid, is going to bring it home for a victory. Yeah, it does seem to be the case. So two years in a row, it will be Heskey who reigns supreme at Monaco. Uh, he's pretty much wrapped up P3 in the championship anyway, but this will definitely cement it. And he will become the fifth, sorry, he'll become the eighth driver ever to score 500 points in the late breaking online racing league. Well, that is lovely. The man, the spring season champion, there you go, Heskey, just for you, is uh, looking like he's doing a good job at uh, representing himself in the full championship. Of course, folks, if you missed it, the Spring Season Championship is a, uh, a minor version we like to run before the new game comes out. Oh, Hickey's gone! Oh, Hickey's in the wall! That is devastation! A pretty boy get through! He's outbraked himself. The he tires! Just gone... That is crazy. He's just gone full on into the corner of Raskas. Harry's got every chance to pick up fourth place now. Jack Hickey's missing half a front wing on incredibly old tires. Harry once again could benefit from an absolute last few laps scrap here. And Hapuni Boy makes it a double Ferrari podium at this rate. I can't quite believe that's happened. Uh, Jack Hickey, his podium streak appears to be over as Bullet Boy is still hounding Harry as he hounds Jack Hickey. Oh! Whoa. Door Harry, shut. Oh, Harry's trying around the outside of the Lowe's hairpin. It's not working. And Bullet Boy's oh, literally forced oh, around. Harry's in the wall. Oh. Bullet Boy drove through. He's oh, in the wall. Harry's now. facing the wrong way. What is going on? DJ! DJ Marshall's making the move. What is this happening? Harry is the wrong way round. Bullet Boy somehow up to fifth. And that's enough for the championship to carry on. DJ is now in sixth. King seventh. Harry, I don't know what's going on there, son. Oh, I mean, first of all, just to say that Bullet, he needs um, he needs the fastest lap, otherwise fifth isn't enough and he needs fourth place. But that was literally the worst driving I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, that was obviously one of the worst <laughs> things we've ever seen in the late breaking on our race. And Hickey comes in, Bullet Boy does pick up fourth place. DJ Marshall and his racing point digger <laughs> trying to make it through <laughs> is the best thing I've ever seen. Thank God he's got JCB on the car because he needed one in that scenario. Jen, you were just scored shopping his <laughs> Get out of my way, lads! <laughs> I want points! <laughs> oh, oh. <so> <laughs> I've lost it! I've absolutely lost it! <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> I'd like to report a crime. I feel abused. <laughs> <laughs> this is fair. Colima. <laughs> oh man! Absolutely taken down. Yellow flies to sector two. Who's that for? Is that Aspect again? Yeah, Aspect's the wrong way round in <laughs> the Nobel chicane now. Um, it's not going well. I think Harry's about to lap Aspect. Yes, he is. So that's eighth lapping ninth. <laughs> what <is that> <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolute carnage every single time at Monaco, folks. It never gets more exciting. Heskey goes through again. Ten seconds is the gap between Heskey and Lopez. Heskey doing everything he needs to, keeping it clean. Easy breezy, baby. He doesn't want any mistakes. Aspect is just not moving. He's just stop. Stop before to back after the Nobel chicane. I don't know what's going on with the lad. Infinity's going to pick up points at this rate. 
Ken also, I think, has damage. I think his front left end plate is missing. So these guys are sharing the damage. And oh. Harry takes the fastest lap of the race. Hello there. Jack King is steals it straight off him, though, because technically he's behind him. And now he's back in front of him. This all makes a lot That's of mine, sense. That's mine, Hickey. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you're all aware, Aspect is now stopped uh, in, the, in the middle of the final sector around where the swimming pool is. It's a <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's in the track. DJ avoids him like an absolute weapon that he is. Cat-like reflexes. We are on the final lap, though. And I can't believe I get to scream it at Monica so well. Is leading Monaco. The man that scored many goals for his country, England, is leading the race. He's, was, he's the spring sprint champion, the reigning spring sprint champion. He's third in the championship and he's coming round the final corner. He, he has done so well to manage this race to be fair to him. But Emil Heskey comes across the line and Heskey wins at Monaco. What a drive from the Red Bull. Lopez, I think he'll be super happy. That's the second podium in a row for Lopez. He comes across the line for second. A Pudu boy is going to follow on his teammate. He finishes in third. Bullet Boy keeps the championship alive just, I think, then, in fourth. Yeah, just about. And DJ Marshall in a JCB will finish in fifth place. It's fourth. It's fourth because oh. of the penalties. Bullet Boy loses the championship. That means Toxic's won. That's game I over. Wouldn't... I think that might be wrong. Um... We'll have to see. That's controversial. Yeah. Jack Hickey will finish in seventh nonetheless. And Harry Eade, after literally being pushed around like a baby in a pram, no saying what was going on for him. One of the worst collisions we've ever seen in late braking is going to drive incredibly slowly up to the line in eighth place. I mean, <laughs> it's slightly anticlimactic. <laughs> well done, eighth place for you. DJ. DJ! 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 Driver of the day! <laughs> DJ! Deserves it. Absolutely deserves it after what we saw him pull out the big scoop and chuck his opposition out the way. But it is Emil Heskey throwing down some sick shapes on the podium. Takes first place. Lopez joins him in second. He'll be ecstatic with that. And that puts him well in front, I believe, of Luke, who unfortunately got DNF by Ninja, her pretty boy also picked up some really essential points. Then run us through what on earth happened. So for the second season in a row, it's Heskey who wins the Monaco Grand Prix after starting third place on the grid. Joined on the podium were the two Ferrari drivers, Lopez in second, second consecutive podium for him, and her Puli boy who, start, who started fourth and finished third. DJ Marshall, fourth here provisionally, however that might be fifth place depending on what happened with Bullet Boy. Regardless, great race and ultimately him getting points at Monaco, it's the law. Ken, he finishes for P5, so he's back in the points. Bullet Boy, P6, possibly P4. Jack Kiki was in contention for the win for the first half of the Grand Prix, but ultimately his strategy didn't play, didn't quite pay off. Uh, had to make a late pit stop, but he does get the fastest lap of the race, just about beating Harry E to that regard. Harry used as a bit of a battering ram down into P8 <laughs> as a result of a late pit stop. Mayner wins the pit stop award. Six pit stops to his name. Congratulations, sir. Two points as well. And Infinity, first points of her season today. Folks, you've seen a lot of firsts in this race. Um, Mind-boggling is the only way I can explain it. Pure carnage here at Monaco. We hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, subscribe if you want to see the last two rounds of Season 4. Next time we're off to the devilish Suzuka. Many bad memories there, folks. But it's going to be an absolute corker as always. And then the finale in Brazil. Stay tuned. Even though the championship, we don't know yet, may be over. We'll have to find out next race. It's still going to be carnage. In the meantime, I've been Samuel Sage. I've been Ben Hocking. And I've been abused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep late breaking. Breaking late. I can't even get the slogan right. For goodness. <laughs> Go away, everyone. See you later. Bye.